the rivalry is back on. Welcome back to the Cody Felger podcast. And on this episode, we're previewing Colts versus Falcons. It's Colts home opener. Uh, they play Atlanta uh, at 1, 1 o'clock p.m. Um, Lucas Oil Stadium. Uh, it's going to be a good game. Derek, how you doing, man? How you feeling about this game? Uh, yeah, this is definitely a, an interesting one for me. Uh, there's definitely a lot of uh, different circumstances going on with the Colts right now. A couple of guys injured, a couple of guys banged up, uh, which is definitely going to make this a little bit it, more interesting of a game. Uh, but I think that going into the home opener, I think uh, the Colts are ready and feel that they know what they need to do to get this home opening win. Right, for sure. And both teams last week were vic- were victorious. Uh, the Colts obviously beat the Titans down in Tennessee. Um, and then the Falcons played on Sunday night and beat uh, the Philadelphia Eagles by a score of 24 to 20. Um, so both teams are coming off a win. Um, I'm looking right now at the preview, Derek. Um, it's kind of an interesting matchup, and we can kind of get into this in a little bit. But it's interesting because um, both teams are on a one-game win streak. Uh, the Falcons are actually – they played indoors, so I believe they played at home already. Um, mm-hmm. and they, they're one and zero in their home in, in record indoors this season, um, but you know I think that was at home, so it's a little bit different as opposed to you know an away game. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, and it's interesting because uh, one thing that that is very what I found really kind of ironic almost, and something that we haven't really seen from this Colts team is the Colts right now are. Uh, I believe they are last in passing yards per game um, and like second in rushing yards per game, which is very different mm-hmm. than anything that we've known that really Colts fans have known in the past couple decades, um, yeah. obviously with Peyton Manning and then with Andrew Luck and the Falcons are one of those teams that is a huge, you know, Matt Ryan already has, already has a lot of yards passing and, and uh, I mean, they had 320 yards passing last game. And so uh, the Falcons are really a pass first offense as opposed to now the Colts are not like that. The Colts are a run first offense from what we've seen in the first two games. Mm-hmm. Um, and so looking at the the passing yards per game and the rushing yards per game, it's very interesting because Colts are 28th in passing yards per game with 168. The Falcons are ninth with 312. And then you flip it over to the rushing yards per game. The Colts are third in a, with 185. I think they're tied. Um, and the Falcons are sitting there at 26 with only 65 rushing yards per game. So these teams are fundamentally on offense really different. They're they're really, you know, schemed differently. And uh, obviously Atlanta with having Matt Ryan, you're going to be schemed more towards pass heavy um, as opposed to the Colts now with Marlon Mack, Jordan Wilkins, those running backs are more of a run heavy team. And so that's going to be an interesting thing to watch. Um, and I guess, Derek, we could start by looking at the offense, um, the Colts offense last week. They weren't as potent as they were in week one versus the uh, the Chargers. And I think in, that has in a large part due to the fact that um, I think the Titans, we can say pretty confidently, the Titans have a better defense than the Colts. And the Titans know the Colts better um, than the Chargers did. And, and we even saw the Chargers, the loss to Detroit last week. So the Chargers may not be that you know team that they were last year. Um, obviously it's still early to tell, but um, I think it's, it's safe to say that the Titans have a better overall defense, especially a better secondary than the Chargers, especially with the Chargers losing Derwin James uh, to injury. And so, um, yeah, I, I think, you know, the passing game obviously was kind of down from the week previous, the Colts turned the ball over a couple times. Um, really the offense was not as potent as it was in the first mm-hmm. game and even the running game. While it still was pretty good. It wasn't, to the degree it was in the first game. And so what can we be expecting, Derek? We can start with the passing game of Jacoby Brissett, and then we can move on down. What should we expect from Jacoby now in his third game of the season as the Colts starter? Yeah, you can definitely expect Frank Reich to kind of open the playbook a little bit more. Uh, he mentioned it after, after the Tennessee Titans game that we need to get more yards, especially in the passing game. You know, we're doing a great job of running the football, but running the football is only going to get you so far. The passing Mm -hmm. game is the most prolific part of the game, so we have to open that up. Uh, Hopefully he listens to his own advice and he uh, figures out a game plan, which I'm sure he will. Uh, He's facing a much less stout defense uh, in this Atlanta team for certain. Uh, They have a couple of playmakers. Uh, They have one decent uh, player in their secondary. Uh, Obviously Jones uh, in the middle of the field is a pretty good linebacker. 
but they, they uh, even though their defensive line hasn't, yeah, their defensive line hasn't been great so far. I mean, they, they gave up almost 200 yards to Dalvin cook in week one, and then obviously got ran over pretty hard uh, against the Eagles uh, when running the football. Uh, I know they got to Carson Wentz a lot, uh, but I think we can all kind of sit here and agree that, you know, the Colts offensive line is a little bit better than the Eagles. Uh, and like you said, it's in a dome, uh, both ideal conditions for both quarterbacks. It's kind of funny because I was mentioning how uh, the Atlanta Falcons, you know, and the you mentioned it, how the Atlanta Falcons and the Colts, they're so different in the way they attack on offense. And that's, but they get to do that both sides because of their offensive lines. Both have very good offensive lines that enable them to do what they want to do. And Jacoby Brissett, I think, just doesn't need to change anything. He just needs to, you know, do better, uh, just needs to run through his reads quicker, uh, just hit guys in stride. And in this favorable matchup where a lot of the receivers he has will have a lot more man to man looks. And we'll have a lot more opportunities. Jacoby Brissett needs to get the hit those guys in stride and needs to. I don't care if he takes a few risks. I don't mind that. But he does need to, you know, continue with the game plan that they had against a less stout uh secondary from uh the Falcons. And as long as Brissett uh does a little bit better on those, then I think he'll have himself another good game. Yeah, and something that I just looked at, I was kind of surprised at. I mean, I don't really know the Falcons team that much, but they actually have a pretty good defense on paper the fir- through the first two weeks of the season. I mean, I think right now in, tor- in terms of yards per game, the Falcons are the third best defense in the league, um, and they're the best actually passing defense in the league right now with the first two games. They only allow 167 yards passing. Uh, but what is interesting to me, Derek, is while they're the top there, then I looked at the rushing yards per game, and they're about middle of the pack. I think they're 16th in the league. And so I think that's where the Colts are going to need to attack again. And it's perfect considering how this Colts offense is set up to run the football, right? And Jacoby mm-hmm. said if he can just not turn the ball over. I mean, the Colts have another, I think, it, it just works well into the formula of how this offense has been built and how this offense has been run through two weeks. And so um, I look for the Colts to attack that. I mean, you talked about Atlanta. They have talented guys on defense. They do. Uh, but I think the the big thing is, you know, that defensive line, they have Grady Jarrett, obviously, who is a, a monster in the middle. Um, but if you can take care of Jarrett, if you can double team him a lot, do whatever you need to do there, take him away. I mean, I don't know their their defensive line, but I, nobody stands out to me amongst their defensive line. And I mean, they're they're not great against the run. So I think that's something that you got to take advantage of for sure. Um, and we can, you know, we can talk about that a little bit. But um, last week we looked at against the Falcons, right? Uh, the Colts obviously had a decent running, re- decent running day. I mean, they're, they're still second in the league in terms of rushing yards, um, total rushing yards, but Marlon Mack didn't have the kind of day that he had in week one. And so what, what does Mack have to do? And what does this Colts offensive line have to do, Derek, to establish him and have him over a hundred yards again, uh, for the second time this year against Atlanta? Yeah. Um, yeah, we're obviously still monitoring that, uh, Marlon Mack injury situation uh I think most yeah. people agree that he will most likely be playing in that game he says that the calf injury that he has isn't anything serious it's just precautionary measures uh just because of you know the decent workload that he's had over the first two weeks and you know being in uh both hot environments uh during that those two games uh that definitely can take a toll on you uh, at the beginning. So yeah, I, I think in order for them to continue to have another good game, like you said, they got to be able to be aggressive in the middle. That's ultimately what they they have to do against this defensive line. Uh, the, the Falcons have never truly had a great defensive line. They have a couple of pass rushers uh, that can get to the quarterback at times, but never have they really been known to really bust things open in the running game. So I think that it, it, would be a big advantage for uh, the Colts to be able to run the football in this game. And even if Marlon Mack isn't it, Jordan Wilkins and Naheem Hines and Jonathan Williams are going to be uh, in there to be able to, you know, make things work for the Colts. Uh, they aren't necessarily as agile as Marlon Mack, but they do uh, grind really hard. They hit the holes hard and that's all we need is just yards. And that's, what's going to make things better for Brissett. And, you mentioned how, you know, at the beginning of this season, uh, 
the Falcons are one of the better pass uh, teams when it comes to uh, when it comes to the NFL right now. Well, here's the thing to mention. Kirk Cousins had 10 passes in the first game when they played him. I'm sorry, but you're not going to give up a lot of yards when Kirk Cousins is throwing less than 15 passes in a game. That's just right. that because they gave up so many yards in the run game against Dalvin Cook. That's where the Colts need to take uh, a page out of the notebook and see if Dalvin Cook can do this. We need to do this with Marlin or whoever's behind that offensive line. And obviously the Eagles, as good as the Eagles can be, they've struggled really early in the uh, early part of this season so far, getting consistency on offense. So I, I'm not as I'm not as flustered by this Atlanta secondary as some people make it out to be. I think the numbers don't always speak for that case. But uh, yeah, I think if the Colts want to win this game, they do need to run the football. And if the Falcons struggle like they did against Dalvin Cook in that offensive line again in Minnesota, then I think the Colts will do just fine. Yeah, I'm trying to pull up how many yards Dalvin Cook had. I know he had over 100 yards for sure. Oh, he had like almost 200. I thought it was like yeah. 170, 180. Yeah, it was close to that. Don't you hate it when you're trying to look something up and your internet just decides, I'm just not going to work because screw you. <laughs> I hate that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay, I finally pulled it up. Box score here. Yeah, okay, so Dalvin Cook had... Sorry, let me pull up the Vikings thing here real fast. 21 carries, 111 yards. He averaged 5.3 yards per carry, and he had two touchdowns as well. Um, oh, and by the way, they also had another guy who had 49 yards. So in total, as a team, the Vikings ran for 172 yards and three touchdowns against the Falcons. And so, yeah, I think that kind of tells the story. Kirk Cousins only had 98 yards because he only threw the ball 10 times. Mm -hmm. So, and he was eight of 10. And so it, it looked really good. Um, and I think that's what the Colts kind of maybe have to do a little bit. I mean, you ride the hand that's hot, right? That's what Frank Reich has done through the first mm -hmm. couple of weeks. Like he knows that he has a, you know, one of the best offensive lines in football and he knows he can lean on them. And especially against kind of a weaker Atlanta front. I, I said, I would say Tennessee had probably one of the stronger fronts um, in terms of in football right now. Um, and, you know, Colts, you know, we're still able to run pretty well against them. And now you have a weaker front in Atlanta. Not to say Atlanta has a bad defensive front, but I mean, the Colts have one of the best in football and one of the best running attacks in football. And I think you'd just be foolish to not just ride that hot hand throughout this game and really just control this game. Because, I mean, if you think about it, like, you know, not to bring back old scars or old wounds, but like, you know, if you make all those field goals in week one, you probably win by double digits, honestly. If the game plays out, of course, you never really know how it's going to play out. But, you know, with all the points the Colts left on the field, like you, like they could have won by double digits at that point. Um, and it was because they ran the football and ran it well. And, you know, if they just clean up those few things, obviously we hope Adam Vinatieri has a great game at home. We hope he's energized by the crowd. Um, but, you know, if you do that, I mean, you're, that's a, that's a formula to win, you know, taking care of the football, running it well. And that serves you well, Derek, come playoff time. You know, if the Colts make the playoffs this year, they can run the football and that's huge. That's, that's how the Patriots have done it for years. I mean, honestly, like you run the football well, you play good defense and you're efficient in the passing game. That's what you got to do sometimes. Um, and we've, unfortunately, as Colts fans seen it so many times and we've seen it with, you know, even with, you know, some of these high profile offenses, these star quarterbacks, right, but they can't run the football and it catches up to you come playoff time. And the Colts have a winning formula right now. Um, and so I firmly believe if they continue to do that, can they continue to control the trenches on both sides? Um, I think they're going to be set up well. And with that, Derek, we can now, tra you know, transition over to the defensive line who had a pretty, I, I would say kind of a up and down game um, week two. I would say they were better than they were in week one. Um, they got to the quarterback a few times and I would say on the whole, they did a better job of containing the run, which I know was a big concern after week one when the chargers kind of ran all over them. Um, but that, you know, Derek Henry, I think he had 80 some yards, 81, 82 yards. Um, but the big thing was he didn't have that. Like we saw in week in week one, like with Austin Eckler and I think Josh Jackson, I think is his name. Mm -hmm. um, they both had, you know, they had those lights out kind of runs um, or screen passes or whatever, what have you. But the Colts did a lot better job on Derrick Henry. Yeah, he may have had some chunks there, but he didn't have that big 60-yard run, right? The Colts were able mm -hmm. to pretty pretty much contain him. 
um, and manage him. Because, you know, Derek Henry's a good player, so he's going to have some good plays. It's just part of the game. Um, but I think the Colts on the whole did a lot better there, and they got and they did a pretty good job of getting to the quarterback, especially, and it looks like potentially they could get back two of their pass rushers and Jabal Sheard, who's been out for a long time, and Kamoko Ture, who was out last week. And so adding more juice to that pass, pass rush will be huge for sure. Um, mm-hmm. But – but on the whole, I think this defensive line is looking better. And then obviously we saw, you talked about Marcus Hunt a little bit, who I think nobody's really talked about, but he's just an all around. He's just a good football player. Mm-hmm. Um, and then obviously Dini Golatri, who we know how good he can be at two sacks last week. Um, and this Atlanta offensive line, I mean, I don't, I don't really know a ton about them, but I feel like this offensive line is pretty much average at this point, And the Colts could take advantage of that. Alex Mack, we know he's been a really good player for a long time. Um, I think they have Jake Matthews out there, who's a pretty solid left tackle. Um, but other than that, I don't really know a whole lot about this offensive line. So, Derek, yeah. what do you think the Colts need to do on defense in the passing game and the running game to control this Atlanta high-powered offense? Yeah, like you said, Alex Mack, uh, one of the best centers in football right now. Uh, that's definitely – going to be difficult for our defensive uh line or specifically our defensive tackles that are going to try to get pressure up the middle they're going to have their hands full uh nothing that Danico Autry can't handle but they need to kind of do what they did with uh the spying of Matt Ryan uh kind of like what they did to Mariota and they're they're gonna need to blitz they're gonna need to blitz I mean, they can't afford to have Matt Ryan uh, back there in the pocket all clean. They have to bring pressure a lot. And I don't know if, you know, our defensive line may not get the pressure that we necessarily want. Eberflus is going to have to bring some blitz packages to bring this in because now also that you think that Darius Leonard may be out, I mean, it's going to be one of those things. They have to start generating pressure. And you got guys that, uh, EJ Speed or Bobby Okariki that can get outside. You know, you want guys like that that can get on the edge. Even if you have to bring in another defensive end, you could bring in Ben Banigou if you want to do that to help with a uh, uh, possible blitz or uh, do a drop back in coverage off the D line. I mean, there has to be something they have to they have to open the playbook on the defensive side even more than they do on the offensive side because. This is Julio Jones. This is Calvin Ridley. This is a bunch of these guys who are really good at receiving. Julio Jones, one of the best in the game. Calvin Ridley, who's becoming a a rising star. Austin Hooper, who's been statistically this season one of the better tight ends so far in this season. You know, you got Mohamed Sanu and a bunch of guys that, you know, are, are really good players when they can get the ball thrown to them. And I mean, with the way Atlanta likes to attack in the offense, they love to throw to the middle of the field. And that has been a weakness for us so far this season. We're going to need to get pressure on Matt Ryan and force him to get the ball out of his hands quickly so that our playmakers can make something happen. That's ultimately how this defense and this defensive line needs to get pressure in order to make sure that we ensure the best success to win in this game. Yeah, for sure. And you mentioned that the middle of the field with the Colts linebackers. Um, one potentially huge news, um, Darius Leonard was evaluated for a concussion earlier this week, and he hasn't practiced yet. So it's not looking great for the reigning defensive rookie of the year. But um, in the case that he does, isn't able to go, what do you think the Colts should do at linebacker? And I was listening to the Colts had like the roundtable thing on Facebook, and I was asking, I, I sent the question in to, to Matt Taylor, like, do you think that the Colts would move Anthony Walker to will um, and keep, you know, put Bobby Okariki at Mike or, and he thought that the Colts would keep Walker at Mike and move up o- and have Okariki play the will. Um, mm-hmm. But also you got to factor in a guy like EJ speed like this. You can see the field more. I, there's so many things the Colts can do. And the beauty with these Colts linebackers is that pretty much all of them, I except I would say probably like Matthew Adams, desire Franklin really um, can play all three positions and play them pretty well. Mm-hmm. And so, um, what do you think, Derek, the Colts are going to do? Say Darius Leonard sits this game. What do you think the Colts are going to do at linebacker? Um, Yeah, I mean, it is going to be a good question of EJ Speed and Bobby Okariki. Uh, we know that EJ Speed definitely is very good in the run game. Uh, 
it's but unfortunately I don't think that Atlanta's gonna try to run the ball a lot on us like uh Tennessee and the Chargers tried to. I think that they're gonna try and beat us through the air, which is what they're really good at doing. And like you said, their offense has not really been a very productive run team so far this year. Uh I just think that this is gonna be one of those games where it's gonna be all about the pass and Okariki is a, a freakish athlete, just like EJ Speed is getting to the outside. I just think Okariki is a little bit better in coverage, so we could definitely see uh, Okariki on out on the edge. I think ultimately we're going to keep uh, uh, Anthony Walker where he's at. I think ultimately he's the leader of the defense. He needs to stay where he is, but it's just a matter of you know. I think that. Uh, EJ Speed will probably not see as much of the field as Bobby Okariki. EJ will probably see a few snaps, but I don't expect EJ to get that many snaps due to how the Falcons play on the offense. Yeah, for sure. That'll be something to monitor. Darius Leonard, um, you know, that's going to be interesting to see because we haven't really seen, we saw last year how the Colts defense performed without Darius Leonard. The linebackers were not good um, to say the least. And so now it's, it's interesting for me to watch young players like Okariki and speed get chances now to get more reps in live games. Um, so it'd be interesting to see how they handle that there. And obviously they need to cover the tight end because Austin Hooper is one of the better tight ends, at least statistically here in the first couple of weeks. Um, so the Colts definitely will need to keep a rein on him. Um, and then looking at the secondary, Pierre Desir went down with an injury last week, um, but has been practicing, which is good. Um, I, think, I believe he was, it was a knee issue um, and he's been limited in practice the last couple of days, but that's good encouraging news considering um, the first report that the Colts could have lost his ear for an extended period of time. It's crazy that now he could potentially be playing and out there on Sunday against the Falcons. Um, but you mentioned it, Derek, that the Falcons have a lot of weapons on offense, especially at wide receiver. Um, obviously Julio Jones, we know what he can do. One of the best receivers in football. I think he single-handedly um, on that last drive, uh, beat the Eagles really and help the Falcons win. Um, so he's a game changer for sure. And then you've got a young player in Calvin Ridley, first round talent. Um, and then you got Muhammad Sanu. Sorry. I don't know. There's people outside just like screaming at the top of their lungs. Good grief. Um, but anyways, you got guys like that, right? Yeah. Uh, who are very, very good players. Um, obviously Julio Jones is an all pro player, probably a hall of future hall of famer. Um, and then you got young, talented players as well. And Sanu, actually, Sanu, I always think he's younger than he is. Sanu, I believe, is close. To, he may be 30 or close to 30 now. Um, mm -hmm. But Mohamed Sanu has been a solid receiver. I think he's a solid player for the Falcons, at least. Um, so he could potentially be, you know, a guy to watch. And then you got, I, I apologize. <laughs> um, anyways, back to what I was saying. Then you got guys like uh, Calvin Ridley who very good player as well, very talented player as well. Um, so there's just a lot of weapons there, Derek, for this Atlanta offense. How do you think the Colts will go about stopping the good players like Julio Jones, Calvin Ridley, and Mohamed Sanu? Um, well, I mean, here's the thing. If Pierre Desir is not ready to play, they're going to have, even if he's ready to play, they have to get Julio double teamed, especially if he's going deep. Uh, Malik Hooker, obviously has to keep an eye on him all game long. We can't afford to have Julio Jones beat us. I'd rather have anyone else beat us besides Julio Jones. And like I said, they love to attack the middle. Uh, this cover two that they're trying to, you know, put people in. Uh, I, I think that EJ and Bobby Okariki are fast enough to hold on to some of these guys, but they're going to need to play some uh something better than just a cover two right now they're gonna have to mix up you know the cover uh the cover two zones or or possibly bring in cover threes and obvious pass down situations uh i think that you know atlanta is a very unpredictable team when it comes to their offense they're they're juggernauts they love to do whatever they can because they know they have the players to do so ultimately again it starts with julio jones you have to Make sure that you get him double covered at all at the whole time. And if Kahari Willis is going to be starting for uh, over Clayton Gathers this week, I think that that would be really cool to see him come in and play. I think he's a much better uh, athlete, and I think he's a more opportunistic guy 
that could potentially create some of those turnovers that we need. Uh, again, it's ultimately about what can we do to slow down Julio, and it's kind of how we uh, attack the Texans a lot. If we can slow down their best player, then make them beat you through a variety of other weapons. Yeah, for sure. And even if Kari Willis doesn't start, because I know the Colts really love Clayton Gathers a lot. Like, even if he doesn't start, he's probably going to see the field a lot, especially after having a really, really good game um, in this in the second game of his career. So it'll be interesting to see how much snaps Kari Willis gets, because he got a lot first uh, that, that last game. Um, mm-hmm. So that'll be something to monitor. Yeah, and I think I agree, um, especially if Pierre Desir's out there. You have a guy potentially to shadow Julio, kind of shut him down. And so that that would be a good thing. If the Colts can do that, if they can kind of have that same kind of game plan um, to stop Julio Jones, then I think they have a really legitimate chance to ha- – you have to make other guys beat you. And, I, you know, I'm honestly not really scared about any of the other weapons on the Atlanta offense. Julio Jones is, is the really the big threat there. Um, but obviously you have to make sure you're covering those guys and you have to make sure – um, that they don't sneak behind you and they don't beat you. So, um, but you know, it's going to be a, it's going to be a good game. I think. I think all the Colts games so far have been really great games. Obviously, the Colts won one, they lost one, and so. But they've been entertaining games, and I think this game's going to be entertaining. I think the Colts are going to be energized by their crowd, and I think they're, I think they're just it is natural when you have home field advantage, you just play better normally. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think the Colts will be energized for their home opener. I think the Colts will do play very well, um, still have some things to correct, and hopefully Adam Vinatieri gets on the right track again and, and, mm-hmm. and is perfect if he's called on to make any field goals. Derek, do you have anything else? Um, I guess we can go with our game guesses, game preview, score predictions um, before we hop off here. So what's your score prediction for this game? Uh, um, I would definitely say uh, it, it's going to be difficult to predict. Uh, we don't know the injury status of a lot of these guys, but if – I'm guessing that the only person that's going to be missing is Darius Leonard. My guess is, is the final score is going to be something along the lines of 28 to 24 Colts. I think it's going to be a high mm-hmm. score, higher scoring game. Uh, I think that it's going to be a little bit of a shootout and I, I hope the Colts prove me right on this one. Yeah. And I'm just looking at this, um, the, the Vikings Falcons game from week one um, and I think if the Colts can impl- – and I think they can. If the Colts can do that same kind of game formula on offense and if they can take away Julio, I think that they can win by maybe not that much, but I think that they could – They could. It, it won't be as close of a game as maybe the last couple of games have been, you know, down to the wire kind of, kind of games. Um, so I'm going to say the Colts score 24 and the Falcons score – hmm, what's a good score? Let's see. So I'm going to say this Falcons score 16. Okay. So that's my score prediction. All right. Um, and I think I don't think it'll be as close as the score indicates either. That's my guess. Of course, I could be wrong. I've been wrong plenty of times before. And Falcons, fan, Falcons fans, please don't – please be more respectful than Titans fans and don't just come into please. our mention. Like right. that, that was silly. I mean, it was fun for us because we were able to kind of rub it in. But um, just let's just be respectful. Let's have a fun game. At the end of the, end of the day, it's a game. There's no need to attack people. Um, right. Let's just have fun. Let's just watch football. And I don't think I need to really tell this to Falcons fans because they seem like they're pretty nice people in general. Um, mm-hmm. And there's, there's really no animosity that we have towards the Falcons. So right. um, it's going to be a good game regardless. I'm looking forward to it. Both very talented teams. And so um, may the best team win. Yep. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks guys for listening. The regular listeners, we really appreciate you and appreciate your support. Um, yeah. Thanks for all you do and go Colts. <laughs>